Hey, if you're new to my channel, then you may not know that every single week I do a weekly roundup. So I go ahead and I collect comments and questions from the week prior, and I allocate a specific video each week to those questions. I find it's a very personal way of me being able to answer comments and engage with you a little bit more. So in this case, I was just doing some cardio and I figured, what the heck, maybe I'll go ahead and answer some questions while I'm on the bike. Okay. Not really, I just thought it looked cool. But anyway, all right, so the first one that I wanna talk about is a video that went out last week, and it was called, Does a High Fat Diet Cause Inflammation? Keto Diet and Inflammation. All right, so it was an interesting video, broke down actually how the keto diet works with inflammation. No, it doesn't cause inflammation, it actually helps it. It's kind of a fun title. So go ahead and check that video out. But the first question comes from Felix Rodriguez. He says, Thomas, do blueberries, raspberries, and blackberries help reduce inflammation, and how much is acceptable of each to remain in ketosis? Um, yes, they do help modulate inflammation, but the sugar in them also can spike inflammation. So it's kind of a balance. Uh, I would say if you're on a keto diet, diet, have no more than maybe like a quarter cup or so. You want to keep it pretty light. Uh, Matthew Engineering says, Thomas, I had a question come up. I was not sure how to answer correctly. I know milk products cause inflammation in the body. My question is, are there any forms of cheeses and yogurts that are better for you to keep your inflammation down? I love Labna, high fat, long aged cheeses. Thanks for all you do and I'm always locked into your channel. Yeah, super good question, Matthew. So basically, uh, cheese that's derived from yogurt is good. Like Trader Joe's has a yogurt cheese, which is pretty cool. So the enzymes and of course the probiotic effect outweighs some of the inflammation effect. But mainly you want to avoid the caseinate blend. So you want to avoid the cottage cheese as much as possible. The cheese is tough. Uh, milk, you definitely have the casein. Uh, yogurt's not as bad, less casein proteins. Uh, goat cheese is definitely the way to go. Goat cheese has much less of the A1 casein. It's got more of the A2 casein, which is just easier for your body to break down. Doesn't have the op opioid effect and the inflammation effect. Uh, Sophie TVB says, hi, I very much appreciate the scientific content of your video. I'd appreciate if you could talk about kombucha and kefir drinks in compatibility with keto diet and fasting. Uh, kefir and kombucha are a no-go on fasting, but the 100% good to go on keto. Just make sure like the GT's kombucha brand, like the Synergy stuff, has quite a bit of sugar in it. So try to go for one that doesn't have a ton of sugar. Um, like seven, eight grams per serving is gonna be about your upper limit. Okay, the next video that I did was taking theanine with coffee to reduce anxiety and improve sleep. Theanine is a really awesome amino acid, okay? It does some really cool things in the body. Basically levels off the anxiety, the jitters from caffeine, but also makes it so you get more of an effect in the brain. So you feel calmer, cooler, collected. It also helps prevent some tolerances with caffeine. Um, Mohammed says, uh, would 400 milligrams of theanine affect insulin enough for it to be considered a fast breaker? No, uh, theanine, although an amino acid, does not break a fast. In fact, there's a publication that found there was a decline in insulin when theanine was taken, so you're actually good to go. Uh, MHNIN says, will theanine break your fast or have an insulin response? Again, no, no insulin response. Uh, it wouldn't break your fast. If you have a bunch of gel caps, then eventually the gel caps are gonna break your fast, but no, you're good. Uh, Bruno says, Thomas, is it useful to mix theanine, tea cream, and caffeine? And also, if theanine is an amino acid, could it break a fast? I like that my message is getting through to people. You, no, the main amino acid that's the issue is leucine, so you're fine with, with uh, theanine. Okay, so yes, caffeine, tea cream, which is great because it kills the, the habit, the habit forming, also makes caffeine a little bit softer. Combined with theanine is an awesome combination, so definitely go for that. Uh, Daniel Reverter says, do theanine users develop tolerance to it like caffeine? No, it's non-habit forming, so you're totally good there. M. Jones says, when do you suggest taking it? Uh, in the morning with coffee is a given, but what about in the afternoon or at night prior to sleep? Totally. Uh, personally, I've been experimenting with it. When I take it in the evening time, yeah, it can improve sleep, but I find that I get kind of weird dreams, but I also, like, I feel so mentally clear that it's hard for me to want to go to sleep. Like, I'm not energized, but I feel clear and I feel like I can get things done. So that's kind of the caveat. Um, and yeah, and she says also assume it's a good idea to take it when you consume caffeine. Yes, definitely. Whenever you're going to consume caffeine, I would recommend coupling it with theanine. Okay, the next video was the Keto Diet Guide, How to Measure Your Ketones Properly. Killer video. You have to go check it out if you're doing keto or low carb at all. It gives you the true rundown of what the optimal ranges are, what you should be doing, like how you actually measure not with the urine strips but with the blood meter instead. Candace says, I have not been able to exercise due to doctor restrictions. Six months on keto, my tested levels are always 0.8 to 1.5. Is that good for weight loss or should my diet be different? No, you sound like you're right in the sweet spot. I like being in the one to 1.5. I often find, oftentimes find myself there. And honestly, if you've been doing keto for a while, you're just keto adapted. You're not gonna produce a whole, whole lot. It's all good. Uh, Bradley T2P2 says, so now I'd like to know why 0.5 is more desirable than 0.2. 
what's happening at point five that isn't happening at point two? If a higher number is more desirable, then should we all just take exogenous ketones? I like where you're going at with this, Bradley, but so point two, it's not that hard to get to point two. You're gonna have a small amount of ketones. Point five, you've got enough to actually recruit different metabolic functions, okay, different processes in the body. Once you're over point three, or once you're over 3.0, you're not, do, you have too much. Like it's just not doing you a whole, whole lot of good. It's no real reason, it's a waste. Your body's gonna excrete more. That's all it is. It's not that more is better. Don't just take exogenous ketones. No, that's not gonna help. Um, okay, uh, Dreskins101 says, Thomas Lauer, why does my keto strip say five? My blood says 1.6. Blood is measuring beta hydroxybutyrate, whereas the urine strips are measuring acetoacetate. Two completely different completely different ketones altogether. So they're not relevant, they do not compare to each other, it doesn't matter. Disregard your urine strip altogether. Uh, Delmi says, I, get my, I got my keto mojo today, my ketones are at 1.0. How can I go deeper in ketosis? I'm 42 years old, 230 pounds, and I'm doing intermittent fasting 16 hours and working out in a fasting window. What do I need to do to get deeper in keto? Help. You don't, you don't need to get deeper into keto, okay? If you're deeper in keto, that means you have excess ketones. It doesn't mean you're burning more fat, okay? so just rock and roll with where you're at, okay? Maybe take a couple weeks off and then go back and you might find that your body changes a little bit. In fact, check out my video on intermittent fasting plateaus. You might get a big uh, benefit out of that. Okay, the next one is weird carbs, your body and resistant starch. This was all about interesting starches that actually don't really metabolize normally in your body, okay? They don't uh, have the same response. Very interesting. So you're talking about resistant starch threes, talking about like uh, potatoes that have been reheated and then cool, et cetera, et cetera. It's really interesting. You gotta check it out if you want just an interesting spin on different carbs. Um, Mad Mike says, does dietary fiber count towards the carb count? I hear that it doesn't change blood sugar levels. Do we subtract these from the count or count them as half? So, okay, dietary fiber, in my opinion, still has an effect in your overall carb count. Count them as half. That's just my opinion, play it safe. Maximilian uh, Bachman says, is it true that when rice is cooked and then cooled, a lot of the starch is changed into that resistant starch? Yes, in fact, I mentioned that. I talked about it with potatoes. Same thing with rice. Uh, Yvonne says, great vid. I may have missed this, but do resistant starch threes become digestible if they're heated after they have been cooled? So they do become more digestible, okay? So some of the starches, I haven't seen a whole lot of evidence on this, but like if you were to cook rice on the stovetop, then put it in the fridge and then microwave it, some of it would become digestible again, some of it would not. But then you have different histamine or amines that cause a different reaction. So amines are, um, like if you've heard of histamines before, amines react with your body differently. Heating and cooling things is not always the best course of action, but it should become somewhat more digestible. Uh, Adam C says, how often should we incorporate these things into our meals? If you are not doing keto, incorporate them once every day or two. If you're doing keto, it's not really gonna apply, honestly. So, uh, and that's it. That wraps up the weekly roundup. Again, guys, I encourage you to comment as much as possible in the videos. Okay, my team and I go through these videos and we find the best comments, the ones that seem to give the most thought-provoking responses. So make sure you put them in there and make sure you're always keeping it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.